often talk about the, the size and scale of the, of the hyperscale companies, the large platform companies, but the two operators in this panel together have more revenues than Google and Facebook combined. They're supported on the panel by a technology company whose job it is to transform these companies into 21st century digital service providers. Enrique Blanco is CTIO of Telefonica Global, where he looks after IT uh, and networks. He's been with Telefonica for 26 years, I believe. Um, Shankar Arumu Gavulu, I spent yesterday evening trying to practice his, his surname, and I still managed not to get it right, so apologies, Shankar. Uh, is SVP and Global CIO of Verizon, with him for 16 years, He's worked across the enterprise and consumer space. And Andrew Feinberg, President and CEO of Netcracker for 20 years. He also has a leadership position uh, with parent company NEC. So welcome to the stage, gentlemen. So, 58 years experience, but you're all in your very early 40s. How does that work? 30s. 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 Um, so, executing digital transformation on a global scale. Maybe I could start with you, Enrique. Um, you're running one of the biggest transformation programs in the industry. Can you give us some idea of the size and scale of what you're looking to achieve? So, I will try. First of all, thank you very much for the opportunity. And let me try to introduce or to present what means Telefonica in the, in the world and what means the operation that we are doing so and what means the digital transformation and revolution that we are trying to push. So first of all, what means Telefonica? So Telefonica means so, uh, uh, a company around 52 billion euros of revenues every year. So it means a company with around 350, 345 million of customers. So means operating in 17, 17 countries all around the world, and means around 120,000 uh, employees, so in-house people working. So this is, this is the perimeter, this has, this, these are the numbers of Telefonica. So, and what we're trying to do, so we're trying to, to uh, execute with an urgent sense a real digital transformation. So we are trying to, to get three, three main goals. The first one it is, so, we try to grow in customer satisfaction. So we try to, to offer our customer a real quality of experience, a real digital quality of experience. So this is not a word. This is something more. So, and we are doing this because we, we, we try to offer our customer and we try to compete and we try to grow in revenues with our customers. So this is not only in terms of to go to the efficiency. So this is not only this. So we are not doing this trying to improve our numbers and to growth in efficiency that has no limits. But this is not only, this is not the, 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 the only goal. So, and, and trying to do this for us, it is very important to identify which are the drivers that will be helping us to do an end-to-end -end digitalization. So end-to-end -end means technological levers and means commercial levers. So we are working, trying to do a radical uh, process automation. So we're building technical capabilities by the hand and with the traction of the commercial levers. So we are building, doesn't matter which is the channel that the customer decide to build a real digital experience. What we can to do, trying to guarantee that the customer can do everything with us without any intervention that it, knows it is not adding value to our customer. So I know this is very simple to say, but it is not so easy to do. If you are really looking and finding what the customer really try to do. The third it is this is just impossible to do if you are only thinking in IT. You need to think on how the access and how the network it is providing the services to the customer, building a smart networks. And building a smart networks, it is not only to build the right access using fiber, which doesn't matter which is the number of the GPON that you are putting before 10 GPON, 25 GPON. So this is not only to offer 4G, 4.5G, 4.9G, 5G. This is something more. It is how you build your network, thinking in digital assets that can be managed directly by the customer. 
So, and this is what we are doing. This is not trying, we are doing today. So, and later on, what this means from the point of view of the digital value proposition for the customer. And finally, which is the final impact in the budget country by country getting global capacities. So, trying to do this, which is a mix in commercial, it is a mix in technological levers, it is very difficult to define what is the border with IT and the network, so every day more and more. So, it is that we are getting all the technology that we have, trying to put it together, so piece by piece, but looking with an end-to-end -end and an holistic way of work, so. And finally, all this investment, all this capacity, they are trying to do the right traction with the commercial processes. Telefonica, as we define, it is a platform companies. So maybe it is clear that we have a first platform, it's our network assets, so clearly sometimes you can see technology and communication technology, but if you try to define that the second platform, it is the IT capabilities, so, and you try to identify what is the border with the first and the second, it is very difficult. So we are doing a big effort in virtualization. We are doing a big effort in SDN, in virtualization and NFB capabilities. We are building the multi-vendor and orchestrator capabilities, trying to define a common layer. So we are doing a big effort trying to evolve all our OSS and BSS capacities working a global approach and trying to guarantee that we will be building the capacities and the evolution because the legacy, it is an answer for us and we need to break it trying to get all the assets, trying to improve and to evolve the BSS and the OSS capabilities. We are working very hard in the platform that they are fully supporting the services for our customer without global view, but understanding which are the specific topic to cover country by country. And finally, the fourth platform that it is helping us trying to build all the capacity of the big data, intelligent artificial, so, and protecting and offering our customer one clear sense of the data that we are generating, generating in our networks because the customer it is using them. This data belongs to the customer. And we are building a clear approach trying to offer our customer this possibility. And we are doing an extraordinary ambitious revolution in the BSS and in the OSS capacities. So we are operating in all the countries and in all the countries we are executing so the full stack capabilities of one of the levers that will be helping us trying to go to do this digital end-to-end -end approach. So we are doing in all the countries. So we are doing the B2C, we are doing the B2B, we are working with the, with the only channel capacities. So, and we are fully convinced that without this piece, we cannot get successful in the real digital approach of our customers. So, this means the Telefonica project, which is really very ambitious, so we are really very proud but very humble because we know that without the cooperation and the capacity and the collaboration with the industry, so, we cannot build successfully what we are trying to do. It is how our customer can interact with us in a pure digital experience. So this is what we're trying to do in Telefonica. Thank you, Enrique. So maybe we come to you, Shankar, and Verizon. And um, I'm sure there's a number of similarities um, with Telefonica's approach to transformation, but you, you are a different type of operator. Telefonica operates in a number of countries in Europe, Latin America. You're, you're largely one market. Does that make it easier? Is there more of a uniformity in terms of culture, people, customers? Uh, thanks. Thanks again, Mark, and, and great to be here. Um, I wouldn't necessarily say it makes it easier. Um, so if you look at our business in Verizon, on the consumer side, you're right. So it's primarily a domestic play, both on wireless and in uh, fixed uh, broadband. Uh, but if you look at our enterprise and wholesale business, that's global, global. right? Um, so also on the consumer side, we grew with several mergers and acquisitions as well. Yeah. So, so if you take our wireless business, for instance, over two dozen companies that we had to like, you know, acquire and grow to where we are today, and through every process, every one of those uh, mergers and acquisitions, we were disciplined in making sure that we were consolidating them. Yeah. It was systems consolidation, it was customers, like, you know, we're rationalizing the business processes, 
rationalizing the product price plans, et cetera, migrating the customers over. So a lot of that uh, heavy lifting, if you will, was done in the early stages for us to truly get to a point where we can say now our entire base of wireless of 115 million customers runs on a single stack of systems. Single point of sale, single CRM. Uh, and, and you are there or you're, you're uh, getting? We are there. You're there. We're there, right? So, and a single billing system that supports the entire base. And same thing on our uh, uh, fixed broadband side as well. Um, if you look at our, uh, um, you know, where we are going as well, so digital transformation, as Enrique pointed out, there are a few pillars that we look at. One is around how we transform our products and services, right? It's all about diversifying into new revenue streams. And if you look at our connectivity business, 5G, we are doubling down in a big way. So by the uh, you know, second half of this year, we will have 5G in the market, Sacramento being one of the first and, cities and, that you, we have. And you're talking fixed wireless access? Fixed wireless, yes, exactly. And very soon to follow, we'll have mobility as well. Yeah. And then we are also getting into the adjacencies as well. So with the acquisition of uh, AOL and Yahoo, so which is now a part of Verizon, so we are getting into the online advertising business. We also have uh, a telematics business as well, uh, where we are with the uh, Telegis acquisition and our own telematics uh, uh, that we had and Fleetmatics, we have the uh, world's largest uh, fleet telematics yeah, solution yeah, as yeah. well. So how much of a focus is people, culture, organization for you in, in terms of it is, it is a big part of this. So when we talk about uh, uh, this whole transformation, culture is a very big part of this. So as uh, management guru Peter Drucker puts it, right, so culture eats strategy for breakfast. Yeah. And uh, clearly throughout, like, you know, we have a focus on how we shift from that command and control culture, if you will, to really one where we are empowering teams to be able to get things done. Uh, and, and you mentioned on the consumer side, you're there in terms of the... Yeah you know, the BSS migration transformation. In terms of the, the organization people culture, yeah. if, uh, if one is you're at the start and 10 is at the end, wh where do you think you are? It's probably like, you know, we are at six, I would say. So that's, so, that's pretty good. Yeah, and, but you know, again, we always like, you know, have a higher gear. So yeah. clearly uh, we are shifting in a big way to get to a new product model. Uh, again, when we talk digital transformation, it only works when it is top down and bottoms up as well. Uh, uh, and so, you know, are there any, any things that you, you can share with us in terms of things that have worked and things that have not worked in terms of that culture change? Yeah. So in terms of the uh, culture change, so a few things, right? One is, a uh, big part of this is really unlearning some other things, right? So, so we have this within Verizon where we say, what made us successful so far is not what's going to get us where we need to go. Right. So, so that willingness to unlearn and learn new ways of doing things is a big one. Uh, and we have a big push in really getting to an agile product-based model, so where we are fundamentally transforming the way we work, where it used to be you would have a priority list and you had people going to work. Now we are at a point where we are making that shift, where we have semi-stable, dedicated teams, and work goes to those teams as opposed to the other way around. Still more work to do, but we are in the process of scaling up the Agile model. Okay, and, and, and any things that you've tried that, that haven't worked that you've learned from or? Um, so I would say like, you know, a few things that, uh, this is one where um, you know, it's really not top down. We right. really learn this thing where you, you don't wanna be prescriptive to the engineers who are getting the work done. So right, you need right. to empower them get them into these squads and give them the liberty to innovate. Yeah. And that's something that we have learned as well okay. to encourage that. Thank you, Shankar. So, Andrew, the, 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 the vendor squeeze between the two operators. I, I, deliber I deliberately put you there, by the way. Um, so, uh, welcome, Impression. welcome. Um, two very different <coughs> discussions and, and approaches. I mean, when you look at uh, operators' transformation programs, is, is there one right way, one wrong way? How do you... How do you address these different focuses? That's a, that's a tough question. It's like asking somebody which one of their kids they love best. Right. And so very, very different approaches. Um, but I think, uh, first of all, let me start by saying you called me a vendor. I think Nick talk, talked about collaboration earlier today. In this transformational journey, vendor approach fails. Yeah. It has to be a partnership. And that's a very, very big part of getting to success, uh, how do you build the ecosystem of partners? Who do you choose to work for? Who do you choose to work with? And how do you build a journey for success? Um, having said that, I think there is no such thing as 
one size fits all transformation. You can't walk into a store and say, I'll take two of these and three of these. It doesn't work. When we start on these journeys with our customers, we bring a lot of out of the box products, we bring a lot of technology, we bring a lot of frameworks, but each approach is different. First, we need to understand what it is that we're trying to accomplish. What are the true objectives of a transformation? What are the tangible results that we are there to deliver? How do we measure them? How do we define success? So that's strategy. That's very, very, very important. That's about 10%. And then you get into execution. And execution, of course, is the hardest part. And that's where cultural transformation comes into play. That's where people and, and systems play a huge role. Um, I think fundamentally, while every transformation is different, there are certain common elements that drive success. Um, we talked about stakeholders buy-in. We talk about cross-organizational drive. Shankar mentioned that it's very, very important not to just get executives. And I think at the boardroom level, we kind of bought in into that concept of transformation. Yeah. But it is important to get engineers, technicians, your field services, your CSRs. That's very, very important. In um, transformation that Enrique and his team are driving um, all, over the, all over Latin America, um, this engagement is a very, very critical element of success. How do you sell to your teams that they're going to live a different life and bring different value to their customers and engage with their customers differently? Now, Albert Einstein once said that doing the same thing over and over and over again and expecting different results is definition of insanity. How do you change that? How do you truly drive that? And their processes and their methodologies and their tools to do this, but fundamentally, every approach is slightly different and understanding the objectives, understanding the organizational strengths and weaknesses, being very, very upfront about your own capabilities and limitations are critical parts to success. And um, we're talking about the transformation of CSPs, but presumably you as an organization have needed to transform to bring in new skills to address some of the softer issues around transformation. Absolutely, absolutely. So everything that exists in this world certainly exists in our world. And some of, some of it is dependent on our customers, some of it is just our own evolution. Um, Shankar talked about agile. That's a major, major shift. Um, we, are, we live in an agile world. Everything that we do today is agile. Um, our organizations need to become more agile. And when we talk about it, it's not just development methodology. And we've had to train thousands of people how to do agile. Uh, we've had to have thousands of people, I love the term unlearn. That's very, very difficult. Having people unlearn to do something that they've done for years and years and years. Um, and we have to invest significantly into that. Um, but fundamentally, rethink how we go to market. Rethink how we partner with our customers. Um, rethink how we exist in this open ecosystem, both of partners as well as, um, as um, sor source code um, systems and standards. So yes, we've had to change just as much as everybody else, and I think our ability to change is, is something that made us successful. Okay, thank you. Enrique, thank you for the slides. Um, maybe I'll come back to you. So, when we talk about transformation, we kind of create this impression that, that it's a single program that starts at the top of an operator and flows at the same time and equally throughout the whole company. Is that how it works in practice? Or if you take a single operator, are there different transformation initiatives in different parts of the organization that you need to try to, to sew together? So it's, uh, it's a good question. So let me see my experience and what we're trying to do. So first of all, you need to get the right people. Second one, you need to be sure that people are working very hard. And third one, it is you need to get clear ideas of what to do. So when you see what we're trying to do, it is, it is not, not to define, so we're talking about the agile. So it is how you can combine thousands of people that they are building a brilliant connectivity so working with the right IT evolution or revolution, how you can put this together, working very close to the commercial people, 
that it is clearly defining which are the services, country by country, with some specific so, topics to cover. So, and how you define a program with all the people on board, understanding which is the holistic approach, which are the levers that they need to do, but it is not working as silos. So this is not because there is one people who it is defining what to do. It is a lot of people with clear ideas and looking not to the top management, looking to the customer who it is really the boss, who it is telling us if we get successful or not. So if you look to the customer and which is the real experience that the customer need to do, so, and you are looking to the industry, so which are the levers that we can use trying to guarantee that in services, in technology, it doesn't matter if it is access, or doesn't matter if it is, a, 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 I don't know, core or IP core or whatever. If you put together all this, and the people has the visibility, and they understand what we are trying to do, and we put together in an agile, in the top level capacity, so the people knows what they need to do, mm -hmm. and they understand which is the real moment that they are living. For me today in the IT, so it is the moment to the execution so trying to guarantee that we are delivering the tools that we need, trying to go very, very fast. So, and and this, is, this, is, this, is, this is holistic, for sure, yeah, yeah. but so we need to guarantee that the people understand what we are asking them. Okay. So, and this is what we try to do every day, at least three times. Thank you. Shankar, could I ask you the same question about, about when you look at transformation in the organization? I mean, how many transformation programs will there be within Verizon? There will be many, many, right? So, so while the overarching objectives of transformation, whether it is transforming products and services, cost efficiency, customer experience, uh, et cetera, still remain true, we do expect, given in, if you take Verizon, for instance, we have multiple network-centric businesses. And each business is in a different state of maturity as well. So they, the programs will have to be tailored to really take them from where they are to what the North Star for that unit is. So we right. don't take a one size fits all. And again, we're not just talking like, you know, customer centricity, as Enrique pointed out, is, is front and center. But there is tremendous opportunities in all the support organizations within the company as well. So even if you were to take finance, for instance, or you take our supply chain logistics organization, we are looking at how we will employ the game changing technologies that yeah. Nick talked about earlier with blockchain, with distributed ledger how that can transform those operations. So really digital transformation is something which is a wholesale reinvention of the entire business top to bottom. So, so, so your role is to bring the different initiatives together, ensure consistency, ensure there's the same roadmap? Yes, and there is standardization so that way yes. we don't have a one-off, right? But the end goal is the same, but how you get there may be different for different, different units, yeah. but at the same time, the technology that you use will yeah. be standardized. Yeah. Thank you. So, Andrew, how do you deal with that? And you go into an operator and there's a number of different initiatives taking place, a number of different stakeholders. Do, do you try to engage at, at a level that can then influence all the way down, or do you try to influence from one department moving horizontally across the organization? Presumably, you know, choosing the right people to engage with is, is crucial to, to how you work. That's very, very true. And I think when we, uh, maybe, Five, seven years ago, Mark, here, we talked about IT transformation. Right? Yeah, yeah. You don't hear that term anymore. Yeah. Right? You have IT leaders who are talking about business transformation. So it's a very conceptually very, very different perspective. So not only it's critical to engage all of the stakeholders across the organization, not just IT, technology, sales, marketing, product, finance, et cetera, but it is very, very important to go all the way down the organization. Um, Enrique mentioned that you know, transformation and approach is conceptually simple. Conceptually, it is simple. We all can explain it very well now, but execution is key. You cannot execute in the boardroom. You execute in the field. You execute out there with the people that need to learn and unlearn everything they've done for so many years. So it is absolutely critical for transformation to be all inclusive. Transformation is a journey. And I believe that transformation doesn't end. Once no, you get no. on that path, you continue to evolve. You continue to change. If you look at business dictionary transformation, uh, definition of word transformation, it will say that the new organization has virtually no resemblance 
to the one that had been transformed. And we're going through these cycles continuously in this market, and that's what drives success. And to have entire organizational buy-in and to create the right incentive for, in incentives for people in all fields and at all levels is absolutely critical. Okay, thank you. Um, I'd like to just change the focus a, a little. You, you and I spoke yesterday and the day before about uh, analytics and, and AI and, and how as sort of maturing tools and capabilities that can help with your transformation programs. Would you like to give some insight into your... Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, um, clearly, um, when we talk about uh, the game-changing technologies, AI, blockchain, et cetera, uh, specifically with AI, I think we are at a point of inflection where we are going to be able to reap significant benefits through, through AI. So if you look at the entire model here, right, so you, the, the raw material for this to work is really data. And in our industry, there is no positive for data, right? We are the biggest producers and consumers of big data. And then when it comes to the compute and storage platforms as well, that profoundly intensive compute environments are here today and, and working. And then on, uh, above that, you have these algorithms, right? So essentially, when you talk about machine learning, it's all about like, you know, having the machine form the rules versus us giving the instructions. So those algorithms used to be a, you know, where it was all in closed research papers, et cetera. More and more of that is becoming open source. And now we are also finding uh, more automated machine learning platforms coming to play as well. So we at Verizon are taking full advantage of those automated machine learning platforms and essentially taking our software engineers to become proficient with those algorithms as well. Because prior to that, we always had to rely only on our data yeah. scientists to be able to get that work done. So now we are able to scale that whole thing. So now the raw material, which is the data, we are able to convert that to an actionable insight that can be consumed at the systems of engagement or for zero touch operations in our network. So um, I truly believe we are absolutely at that point of inflection where this will just take uh, off. And you're a very large operator. I'm sure there's some CSPs in the room here who don't have the size and scale of Verizon. I mean, all, those tools that you mentioned, are they within reach of each and every CSP? Absolutely. Absolutely. A lot of this is open source. And this is what I say, like, you, know, when, you know, when we talk about letting not being too prescriptive to your engineers and let them say, give them, point them to an area and say, here is exactly we want to innovate and get out of the way. They will figure it out. So, and, and this is true whether you are a small CSP or a large CSP. And a lot of these things don't come top down. They yeah. figure it out because they are in the open source communities. They are seeing exactly what is the innovation that's happening there and how they can translate that to business outcomes. Okay, thank you. It's, it's DSP now. So oh, yes, that's, yes. That's yesterday. <laughs> Enrique, I mean, looking at your slides, you know, AI analytics is, is it's one, of your, one of your four platforms. Can you, to what extent are, are you now using those capabilities in the transformation programs, the full step programs that you're working on today? But yeah, but, but not only in the, in the fourth platform. So the fourth platform it is helping us with the AI tools and the, with big data. So it is helping us trying to build a proposal for the customer, but we are using AI uh, trying to build our own way of how we are managing our networks. So uh, we, we, we have been working in, in using tools trying to, to do the, the automatization of the tickets. So the second step was uh, using machine learning, trying to build predictable networks. We have been doing a big successful in this. So saving, but not saving. So offering a better quality because the network it has been active and, and ready. Mm -hmm. So additional uh, average, this is good for us. And, and we are now getting all this experience trying to build AI capabilities, so managing the network, trying to guarantee that we are offering a better quality of experience for our customer and maximizing the use and the quality and the, and the capacities of our network. So this is key. When we are working with the fourth platform for the AI and the cognitive capabilities, we are thinking in the customer again. But when we are getting the AI capabilities, we are embedding this within the network, how we are managing, provisioning, and operating our network. So, and finally, we are, we are looking that this network will be giving to the customer an additional quality and services. So AI, today it is just impossible to think in, in how we will be evolving and managing the network, but not for the future today, if yeah. we are not using this kind of tools. Thank you. So I'm aware that we're nearly out of time. So my, my last question to all of you, Andrew, we'll start with you. Um, Nick mentioned, according to McKinsey, 70% of transformation programs fail. What three things would you say are the keys to success for people in the room? 70% fail. Um, look, look, I think 
the best transformation I ever performed was here in Europe, in Sweden, where I, I think it was in 1967, where they flipped a switch and they stopped driving on the left-hand side of the road and they started driving on the right-hand side. That is the most <laughs> successful cutover ever in the history of transformation. We don't live in that world. Nothing's perfect. So in our world, to be successful, you have to be willing to take risks. You have to be willing to think creatively, think out of the box, and just continue to change. Fa fail fast, learn, move on. Commitment, execution, people, those okay. are the, the success okay. criteria. Thank you very much. So we are out of time. I actually have a final question for Enrique, which is, I know that you're mainly um, a basketball fan, but I think you follow a certain football team in Madrid. How many goals do you think Mo Salah will score for Liverpool next week? <laughs> <laughs> so first of all, that, that, so respect, so respect to Liverpool so, and good luck. So, so don't forget that the football it is the most important thing or the less important thing. Yeah. So, <laughs> okay. so I, I, I don't know how it will be the final, so I, I five supporters, this is not that, only that's, for that's not, what you, that's not what you said to me yesterday. You said yeah. we're going to win. Four, yeah. Was it 4 1, you said? But you know, you so know. You have a bigger audience now. If I try to compare to the Real Madrid so, uh, uh, with Telefonica, so I'm just only sure of one thing so we will compete. Okay, very good. So, Enrique, Andrew Shankar, thank you so much.